Hi guys, what's up? It's Alina. Do you ever just want to be artistic and paint something but you are scared because you might screw it up and waste your time and waste your money and waste all the materials you got and now you are just a disappointment to yourself and your family? Well, luckily today's not that day because together we will be painting this tote bag. So I got this tote bag from Amazon, it's cheap and it comes in a pack of three. What I like about it is that it has a button on it and it also has a small pocket inside where I can put my small items. Also before we start, I would suggest grabbing a cardboard or anything that is flat, which is in my case my breasts, I mean my trusty cutting mat, and put it inside the bag. That way it would be easier for you to paint and you have a flat surface to paint on. Here I am using a scotch tape to sort of lay out the size of the painting if that makes sense. This is probably the best advice I could give you, you'd be thankful later. So I'm starting with color blue and white, and as you can see I'm running out of white paint so I'm just cutting it open for efficiency. And here's a video of me not knowing what is about to transpire. Oh, I'll go paint on my nose! Okay guys, I don't know what happened but I was trying to smell the paint but unfortunately it went into my nose. That's why. So in this part, I used blue and white paint to create the wind pattern or effect of the painting. And I also realized during this part that the canvas is too dry that it absorbs the paint. Whoops. I'm putting this clear gesso just because it's kind of difficult to blend into the canvas. So now I'm going to try mixing this in here and let's see how it goes. I guess that way it will be easier to paint the canvas. Because right now the canvas is basically like a cloth where it just absorbs all the paint. So after using the clear gesso, it really helped a lot on blending in the colors together. And I also realized how important it is to primer canvas first before painting. So here I am just painting the first layer of the painting based on how I see it on the reference photo. Um, honestly, there is no rule or there is no right way on how to paint or how to do this. Whatever you feel like doing, just do it because art is a freedom of expression. Sometimes I surprise myself of what comes out of my mouth. Can I say that's what she said? No? Okay. Here I am just finishing the bottom part with some dark blue, so later on we can paint it over with the actual detail of the painting. This is my favorite part of the entire process, which is painting this tiny, tiny details. Um, it's honestly so therapeutic, and for a good few hours, I was just painting and not listening to anything. It's relaxing, and a life advice to everyone, try at least once in your life to paint something. Trust me, it's really nice to just let go of whatever creativity you have in your head and put it in your hand and just trust the process. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> Anyways, here I am just mixing white and yellow together and just adding a bunch of details based on what I see from the reference photo. Also, another tip is make sure your brush strokes follows the painting. Say this detail has a circular motion. That means your brush stroke has to be in a circular movement too. You can't just paint random straight lines everywhere because it just doesn't work that way. I would call this technique as dash lines because that's what we call this line in architecture school. But if you're a fine art student, let me know and you can critique me and leave your comment below. Also, do not hesitate to add more colors. We are not trying to copy the painting but knowing the technicality of it. Adding more white and yellow will brighten the painting while adding blue or dark blue will darken and will add depth to the painting. This part here is up to you. Feel free to add what you want because it will definitely help your hand and brain coordination. Here I am adding the details using the dashed line technique. I also use the same technique for the moon detail but making sure that I stroke my brush in circles, not in straight lines. I'm honestly scared to bring this bag outside now. I feel like this painting is too big that it will attract all the attention to the bag. It's terrifying, but it's cute, so who cares? Here I am just adding a few touch-ups. Painting is so weird because you just gotta add lots of details that you feel like is missing until you get your ideal result. And when do we know if it's finished? Never. I read this quote back then that says, painting is never finished, it is only abandoned. 
which totally makes sense because paintings or any form of art can be improved. And whenever you feel like it's not done, you can always go back to it and touch it up. I actually have so much artworks that I haven't finished and it's difficult to even think of going back to them, but I'm sure someday I will have the absolute inspiration to continue them. Anyways, here is the finished product. I have more photos on my Instagram account, so make sure to check them out. And here is me awkwardly modeling this bag to attract potential customers. So that is all for today's video. I hope you guys liked it and I hope you guys tried it at home. Thank you so much to Gia for sharing my previous video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. If you want to be mentioned on my next video, please don't forget to share or retweet this video. And if you like this video, of course, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I will be posting more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!